Mr. Bill, a comment? Uh, the, yeah, these free trade agreements that were made, uh, essentially they're not, they're not fair, and so we need to revise them. There's uh, one thing that I think Mrs. Emerson has advocated for for a long time, and that's to open up the Cuban markets to agriculture. And I actually supported that over the years, and then I got to thinking about it. You know, if we open up Cuba to, to, uh, for our goods, which to me on the, on the surface appears good, uh, we're going to be working with another communist dictatorship that has a large pool of free labor that we can export jobs to. So in that circumstance, I would oppose opening up Cuba uh, uh, in order to uh, trade with them until the situation changes as far as the government is concerned. And that's the, the one thing that, like I said, I thought it was a good idea initially, and then as I thought things through, I thought, well, maybe we shouldn't do something like that. Thank you. Mr. Van Dieven. Well, free trade occurs between individuals. We don't need free trade agreements between nations or favored nation statuses. This only results in protectionism and tariffs and trade deficits. Ultimately, free trade would occur without government interference. I support free trade with all nations and alliance with none. Mr. Sowers? Well, the American farmer can clearly compete with any other farmer uh, in the world. But we've got to have a fair and balanced playing field on which to compete. Unfortunately, the free trade or the so-called free trade bills that Congresswoman Emerson has supported, she mentioned the one that she didn't, but she didn't mention most favored nation uh, trading stat status with China or CAFTA or a number of others, almost a dozen free trade deals. She also mentioned that what we need to do, right? Congresswoman Emerson has been in office for 14 years under Democrat and Re Republican presidents, Democrat and Republican held Congresses. Why hasn't it happened yet? When I, when I think of trade, I think of a farmer I met down in, uh, in the Boot Hill who sits on a $25 million estate. And when I talk to him, his main concern is that his son isn't moving home to farm because the trade deals have decimated our manufacturing, which has decimated our small towns. For me, I will fight to renegotiate these trade deals. All right, thank you. We have time now for one more question, and that question will be asked by Mr. Rust, and it will start with Mr. Bill. It's a little offbeat question, but maybe one to end the evening with on the question side. As you assess your opponents in this race, what do you see as the strengths they would bring to this office? What are your weaknesses? I've only got two minutes for my weaknesses, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've worked with uh, uh, Mr. Van Dieven. We, we have policy discussions all the time, and I think he's a very good thinker. I think he's brought a whole bunch of good points out. So uh, I'm going to copy some of your notes when I get to Congress. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, as far as uh, Mr. Sowers is concerned, that guy works hard. And I mean, uh, uh, he really has been everywhere. I, I see him all the time. I follow him on Facebook. He's always been a hard worker, and obviously he's also got connections because he's able to not only work in the 8th District, but also to work back in Washington and around the country. And so I respect that too. Uh, Mrs. Emerson actually stepped into office at a difficult time in her life, and uh, she uh, has, has worked very hard for us. Uh, the people I run across and, and talk to are, um, they're, they're, always, uh, they're always friends to her, and her constituent services, in my opinion, have been very good, because that's the feedback I get when I go door to door. Uh, probably my own biggest flaw is I was a jet pilot, and I can make a decision. That's no problem, but sometimes it's not the right one, and sometimes I don't get all the input that I need to make a decision. So that's one thing that I've been working on all along. So hopefully uh, we can help each other with this forum that we've had tonight. Uh, hopefully we've picked up some solutions. Hopefully you've uh, come to a resolution too on the way we're thinking. As you can tell, we're all serious about this, and we're all concerned about our country. So please uh, respect us uh, once you get into the, to the ballot box and make that tough decision between four people. Thank you. Mr. Van Dieven, a comment? 
Well, if I was on the outside looking in instead of the position that I'm in now, I would be excited by the choices that I would have at the ballot box. I think there's really no excuse for anybody to stay at home during this election. We've got experience with uh, Representative Emerson. Mr. Sowers has an amazing pedigree. He's had all kinds of world class experience and uh, an amazing education. Mr. Bill's a veteran of several years and he's been a contributor to the local economy through his uh, efforts in the housing markets. And I would just be thrilled to death to be voting this in November. <laughs> All right. Mr. Sowers. Well, I've spent a lot of time out on the road, and Larry Bell, I have seen him out with a clipboard in the rain, in the snow, on the courthouse square, and usually you, you bring your wife along with you. I usually just bring my dog. Um, <laughs> Rick, I've seen you out there. I think you've added so much to this debate. And again, it's an honor to have, uh, I think, four qualified candidates and a true choice. And Congresswoman Emerson, I do want to thank you again for your 14 years of service. This is my first campaign, and campaigning is not easy. Uh, you know, my buddies ask me how things are going, and I say, no one's shooting at me, but they're still trying to kill me. Um, <laughs> So to have done this for 14 years is, is incredibly impressive, and I want to thank you so much for your service. As far as my weakness, I fight on through the objective, and sometimes that if I'm running into a wall, I'll just keep bashing. I'll leave it at that. Ms. Emerson. This has been a, a fun evening, and uh, I want to say about all of my opponents that they've got great passion. And it's really important to have passion for the people. Uh, when you run for office because uh, you have so many people uh, uh, from all sorts of backgrounds with whom to talk and from whom to, uh, to listen. And I want to thank Larry Bell. He did a great job in getting all of his signatures. That just took a lot of perseverance and it was, it was a lot of hard work. And Rick, I love some of your ideas. Some of them are a little different, but uh, <laughs> you know, I, 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 think that, I think that they're great. And you really believe them, and that's, that's a terrific thing. And I would say about Mr. Sowers that I have never seen anybody who can raise money as well as he does, number one. Uh, and I also want to thank him for his service to the country. Um, he and my stepdaughter served in the first ID when I first met him many, many years ago. And so thank you very much for that. And uh, my, my biggest weakness is I kind of always want to be in control. And with this job, you're never in control. <laughs> All right, thank you, candidates. That concludes uh, the questioning. We thank our panelists for their questions, and now it's time for the two-minute closing statements. And as we said earlier, we will start in the reverse order of the opening statements. That means we'll begin with Mr. Bill. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, I appreciate that this is being broadcast uh, throughout the 8th District. Uh, I think that's very important for the people at home to see us in action. I think that's really helped a lot. Uh, like I said, our campaign has been different. We were independent. We're self-financing. Uh, those are the things that I would like to see in a candidate, so that's why we ran it that way. A lot of people have asked me, they said, uh, uh, you know, if you're independent, you know, it, that's never happened before. Well, actually, about 14 years ago, there was a person that was decided that the Republican and the Democrat, that they could do a better job than the Democrat or Republican that was running and went through the same process and got herself on the ballot and actually got elected and sent to Congress as an independent. So what I'm asking people today is to think, can it be done? It's already been done. And please try to make that decision as you go forward again. We can make history in the 8th District one more time. Thank you. Mr. Van Dieven, you have two minutes for a closing statement. As a libertarian, I challenge the cult of the omnipotent state and defend the rights of the individual. I hold that all individuals have the right to exercise sole dominion over their own lives and the right to live in whatever manner they choose, so long as they do not forcibly interfere with the equal right of others to live in whatever manner they choose. Governments throughout history have regularly operated on the opposite principle that the state has the right to dispose of the lives of individuals and the fruits of their labor. 
Even in the United States, all political parties, other than the Libertarian Party, grant the government the right to regulate the lives of individuals and to seize the fruits of their labor without their consent. I deny the right of the government to do these things and hold that where governments exist, they must not violate any individual rights, namely the right to life. I support the prohibition of the initiation of force against others, the right to freedom of speech. I oppose all government attempts to abridge freedom of speech and press, as well as government censorship in any form, the right to property. I oppose all government attempts to interfere with private property, such as confiscation, nationalization, and eminent domain, and support the prohibition of robbery, trespass, theft, and misrepresentation. And since governments, when instituted, must not violate any individual rights, I oppose all attempts by government to interfere with voluntary and contractual relations among individuals. People should not be forced to sacrifice their lives and property for the benefit of others. They should be left free to deal with each other as free traders. And the resultant economic system is the free market. Thank you. Mr. Sowers, your closing statement. I would like to start off and thank the university, the moderators, and the fellow panelists for a very lively debate. When I served in Iraq, I wasn't alone. I had my fellow soldiers, and I had this uh, steel and case combat Bible. Now this Bible reminds me a lot about the people that I met out on the campaign trail, the people of my home. It's tough on the outside, and it's filled with a lot of common sense and wisdom on the inside. And I think it's time that we bring that toughness, that common sense, and that wisdom to D.C. I will vote to renegotiate these trade deals so that we can start making things here in America again. I will stop these bailouts. I will vote to end these wars overseas, bring our troops home, and take care of our veterans. And I will fight every day for you. I will fight every day for you. When I was in Iraq, I had to believe in things much bigger than myself. I believe in God. I believe in the Constitution I taught at West Point. I believe in America. And I believe that our better days for rural America are ahead of us. And I'm asking you tonight, whether you're Republican, Independent, Tea Party, or Democrat, to believe that this election is above party label, that your vote can make a difference and can send new blood to DC. I'm asking you to believe in me. Thank you.